Many guitar players just love having a wide range of possibilities within one instrument, mainly because it is actually very practical. And I've been one of these people because I used to play in cover bands and when you play in cover bands you actually need to cover a lot of ground when it comes to guitar tones and not all of us are Joe Perry so we cannot really carry around multiple guitars. We cannot even afford multiple guitars. So what we actually do, we turn to some kind of modding. We like to have guitars with switches. Sometimes these switches do magical things such as splitting coils. And it sounds really amazing because you actually get a humbucking pickup to sound like a single coil. Wow! But is that really true? Does it really sound good? We're gonna be exploring all of that stuff in this video because splitting coils comes with a lot of problems. We're gonna be exploring these problems, we're gonna learn a lot about splitting coils and we're gonna learn how to fix these problems with splitting humbuckers into single coils. So I highly encourage you to grab a beverage. I've got the shroom cup right over here and spend the next few minutes with me talking about splitting coils. It's going to be a lot of fun, I promise you. All right, so first we need to talk about the problems. So what are the problems of splitting humbuckers into splitted single coils? Well, the first problem that everybody's trying to tackle is the output. When you split a typical humbucker into a single coil, the output is going to be lower and that is quite annoying. A second problem is noise because actually single coils that you get by splitting humbuckers are noisier than the standard single coils that we all know and love. Plus, there is the fact that when you split a typical humbucker, you don't really get the sound of the single coil that we all love. I understand that is debatable but not in this video. So what are we going to do about it? Well, the first thing that we are going to be doing is we're gonna be learning what actually makes a difference here because pickups are actually super simple, but yet they're super, super complicated and the way how they affect our guitar tone and our guitar player brains is quite weird. There's so many things about these thingies that affect the sound. But let's just say that usually in my videos, I talk about the RLC thing so the resistance, inductance and capacitance thing, which is like something that electronically makes a difference drastically. In addition to that, we also have the geometry of the pickups, which is extremely important, how close they are to the strings. So all these magnets, what kind of shape are they and are they staggered or not staggered or is it a PAF design or something else? Like all that really contributes to how a guitar pickup is going to sound. So when we are talking about some things in these videos, we actually have to truncate some of the information so we can actually extract something that makes a huge difference. And only after that, we can talk about some things that are pretty much important, but less important. So we don't end up comparing a Stratocaster and a Les Paul and just saying that the nitrocellulose lacquer is the thing that makes a difference. So what is important to understand is that when we are splitting a pickup such as this like PAF style humbucker, what is going to happen is that nothing is going to happen to the geometry of the pickup. Therefore, nothing is going to happen to the magnetic field. So the magnetic flux lines are going to stay the same. The distance between the strings is going to stay the same. Magnetic pull and all the kind of stuff that you want to discuss, but what is going to be changing? Electronic conditions at which this pickup operates. And we're gonna see all that graphically in LT Spice because I love it. One very important thing to say before we begin is when you split a humbucking coil, you will effectively change the inductance of the coil that is in the circuit, making it less, usually around like half of the value of the humbucker. When you split the coil and change the inductance, it will affect how much voltage the pickup is going to be generating when the strings are sort of moving inside of the magnetic field. Therefore, the output will be lower, like always. But we actually want to learn now 
what is going to be happening with the frequency response and how will that affect the output as well. So we're going to jump into LT Spice right now and we need to set up some kind of a reference for us because usually what people want when they split a pickup such as this one, they want it to sound like a typical Strat single coil. Therefore, I selected some values of a typical vintage sounding Strat single coil, 2.8 Henry's of inductance and 6.5 kilo ohms of resistance going into 250k pots pots which make a difference and we're going to talk about it and we are also adding some cable capacitance and some like real world stuff so we can get plots that are as close as possible to the real world. So if we simulate this in LT Spice, we're gonna get a plot where we can see the frequency response, basically something very close to how the pickup is going to sound like. And you can see that there is some kind of a small resonance around three kilohertz, a little bit less for this pickup. But this whole thing doesn't mean a lot until we actually add some other plots so we can actually see what the differences are. Now I also have another pickup over here, which is a vintage humbucking pickup, something that I have in my PRS 594. It's like a very low output PAF style vintage humbucker. Take a look at this. This is the blue line, slightly different. You can see that the actual resonant peak has moved down in the frequency, but it's also a little bit higher and we're gonna talk about that later. But we also have some different pickups, some higher output humbuckers, and we can also simulate that and add it to our fun equation over here. And this is the red line. So you can see that the resonance now is a little bit lower in amplitude but it has moved even lower in the frequency range. Very interesting stuff. What happens when you split a humbucker is that basically because typical humbuckers are wired in series, when you actually split them, you are pretty much going to get half of the resistance and half of the inductance. Not really exactly half because usually, especially in these vintage PAFs, they kind of wound these two bobbins a little bit different. Therefore, they're not exactly the same, but round about the half value of inductance and resistance is the thing that we're gonna be getting. And if we plot that, so I selected here 2.2 Henry's and 4.5 kilo ohms as being like a split coil of a vintage PAF humbucker. And if we add that to our graph, take a look at this. This is this teal line, but we can see that it's even higher in the frequency range compared to our reference single coil, which is the green line. In addition to that, it also has a higher amplitude. Now, if I clean this stuff up so you can see actually only the split single coil compared to our reference coil, you can see that it's quite a different frequency graph. Now, for people who are not experienced in looking at these graphs, I can say immediately that this is actually going to sound thin in some cases shrill. And it is funny that not only that you're going to get the lower output out of this split single coil when you compare it to the humbucker, it is also going to be brighter in a not so pleasant way, which is funny how it works. It is going to make it sound like even lower output in some funny way but that's just how it works. Therefore, we have a huge problem because our split single coil actually doesn't really sound like our single coil that we wanted to sound. The real single coil is going to sound fuller, is going to sound like this or like that. You know all the adjectives. Now, what would happen if we would split a higher output humbucker, because obviously this splitting of like the vintage PAFs is not really interesting. So let's split a higher output humbucker and let's add that to the graph. So take a look at this. Now we have the blue line and the blue line is actually quite a bit closer to the green line over here. In terms of the frequency, it is very close, but it still has this higher resonance. And in this case, we could possibly fix this by changing the 500K pots to the 250K pots so they match the ones that are used for the single coils. And we can also add that to our graph. So take a look at this red line. If you compare the red line and the green line, you will see that they are quite close. That basically means that when you actually split a higher output humbucker, it is going to sound much closer to the real single coil thingy. Now, yes, of course, the geometry, the magnetic field, all these kind of things will create a different 
sounding pickup. It's not gonna sound the same, but it's gonna be much closer than splitting a typical PAF. And I'm sure that you had a lot of these experiences, that you had some guitars where the pickups were actually split. Awesome, the sound would be great, but sometimes it just doesn't work. They're too thin unusable. And since the output of the split coil is quite a bit lower and you have not changed anything to the magnetic field, you still have this big magnet and the big surface and everything, you will actually end up with a noisier sound, which is something that we don't really want or like, or we shouldn't like it or want. It. <laughs> Another thing that was quite impractical in this example is the fact that we are splitting the coils, but then what do we need to swap the pots? Because if you're using 500k pots, you're obviously getting something different. The pots affect the tone in such a way that the resonance is going to be higher when you use higher resistance potentiometers. Oh, and by the way, if you're triggered by these videos, which are based in logic and reason, please do not subscribe to the channel and downvote the shit out of it. And never visit the Slightly Technical Academy at which you can actually register for free and find some tech pages, some of which talk about these things in detail. You can also get free Tonex packs. And if you don't want to support this channel, then never buy any of these very cool Tonex packs that are available on the fucking Slightly Technical Academy. But I'm still happy that you're watching. All right, now we're coming to the part of the video when I'm gonna be talking about some of these solutions. Now we were mentioning these pots and I said it is quite impractical. And yeah, in a way it is impractical, a little bit harder to implement, but there are also ways in which you can actually change the value of the pot when you split the coil. Now you will have to let me know if you want to know more about this down in the comments and maybe I can make a video about these things because there are so many different guitars and so many wiring diagrams that it's really hard to explain, make a universal explanation how you can do this. But basically what you can do is that you can use the switch to add a resistor in parallel to the potentiometer. So if you have a 500k pot, find a 510k resistor and connect it to the switch in such a way that when you activate the single coil that the actual resistor connects to either leg of the pots, what is going to be happening then is that you are going to be reducing the resistance of one of the pots or either of the pots, so depending on the guitar that you have. And effectively your pickup is going to be seeing around about 250 kilo ohms. Changing the sound to what we actually saw here, which was much closer to our reference Strati single coil. <laughs> All right, so solution number two, which became popular relatively recently, is something that is actually called a partial split. And it's a great solution. I actually have partial splits on my PRS 594. And what a partial split does is that when you have a pickup such as this one, you will not ground one side of the pickup or actually one pickup within this humbucker. You will not ground it completely. So you will not disengage it completely. You will actually use a switch just like for a split coil. But instead of connecting it to ground, you will connect it to ground over a small resistance. Therefore, you will not disengage one of the coils completely. It's gonna keep on working and it's going to reduce noise drastically and you're not gonna be having such a volume drop and you're not gonna get this crazy bright sound that sounds like shit, but it's going to sound thinner and brighter and more like a single coil and this is the way that I would always do split coils nowadays, especially for lower output pickups. Here we have a wiring diagram for this PRS594, which you can find on PRS's website and you can actually see exactly how it is done right over here. So we have these tone pots, which are push-pull pots. And here we can actually see how you do the wiring from the pickup and they're using 2.2 kilo ohm resistors for the treble pickup and the bass pickup is 1.1 kilo ohm resistors. You can actually experiment with this this, but these values are a great starting point. All right, so the third solution is one that's possibly the best, but it's actually quite complicated because you need to rewind the pickup or you need to buy pickups that are of a certain type. And that is something that is like a tapped split coil. That is something that some manufacturers do today because how it actually works, you wind some wire 
over this pickup. And you're going to get to a certain point where you're going to be satisfied, all right, this is the actual pickup that I want, but then you can actually create a tap and you can continue winding and overwind it a little bit. So what you can do in a humbucker and what a lot of these manufacturers do is they would wind one of the coils to the point where they want it for humbucker operation, but they would also add some more windings to this coil and they would put out a wire. So when you're actually splitting, you're not only disengaging one coil of the humbucker, you're also switching to the other wire, to the other tap on the coil that's going to be working, which is going to be overwound, therefore having more inductance and more resistance, therefore sounding more like the real Strat single coil that we actually started off wanting to get the sound of. All right, so I hope you found this video interesting and you've learned something today. You go and experiment with these things and please let me know down in the comments, do you like split coils? What kind of split coils do you use? What kind of split coils do you like the sound of and what kind of pickups actually split well? I thank you all for watching. I'll be seeing you in the next video very, very soon. Bye.